Hi folks, I'm Sean Bagshaw and this is another TK Panel Quick Tip. Back in September 2019, Tony Kuiper released an update to his TK7 panel. It has a bunch of improvements, both big and small, and I've already posted quick tips to the Infinity Color Mass and my channel's features. Tony also has a video overviewing the new features, and I'll link to all those in the description. For this quick tip, I'm going to take you through an update Tony made to the mass, the rapid mass feature that came out with the original TK7 panel. The mass, the rapid mass feature in the panel is a shorthand version of the more complete masking a mass technique I show in this video. For the most control and flexibility, it's worth the time to do the full version of the technique. But in many situations, the quick version here in the panel will do the trick just fine. The basic concept is that oftentimes you want the control a luminosity mask is providing in parts of the image, but not in other parts. For example, in this image, I want to soften the tones in some of the highlights. So I might start with a Lights 1 mask, and then add that to a Levels Adjustment layer, and then make an adjustment to bring down those highlights, and I can see that the mask is allowing me to target the tones that I want, but I don't want the adjustment to happen across the entire image. So I'll delete that layer, and we'll start over with that Lights 1 mask again. But before I output the mask to an adjustment layer, I'll use the Lasso tool to select the parts of the image where I want the Lights 1 mask to be applied. So these brighter areas up here, and here, and over in this corner over here. Oops, bring it all the way down into there. And maybe this little bit right in this area as well. Okay. Now I'll click the mask, the rapid mask button. Here's where the update to this feature comes in. Previously, a default blur radius was automatically applied and you couldn't change it. The update allows you to choose the blur radius you want. It starts with a suggested radius based on the image resolution, but you can set more or less blur as you choose. In this case, I'll set a little higher blur radius. Now the Lights 1 mask only shows up in the areas where I want it and the transitions are feathered as I selected. And now this is the mask that I'll add to that Levels Adjustment layer, and then complete my adjustments. So here's what that adjustment looks like with the mask that we made. And there's the mask that's controlling it. And here's what that adjustment would look like if we didn't have the mask there at all. Far more extreme than we'd want. So that mask is doing a great job of targeting the adjustment as I want it. Being able to change the blur radius of the mask, the rapid mask feature also comes in handy in situations where you don't want any transition blur. For example, where you have a hard boundary between the sky and the land, such as in this image. I want to lighten up the dark landscape, so I'm going to start with a Darks 1 mask. This will allow me to lighten the darker tones while also keeping the places where the sun is spotlighting from becoming blown out. So I'll add this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer, and then I will use that adjustment to lighten and work with the contrast a little bit to get just how I want it. It works great in the land, it's lightening the landscape, but it's also protecting these highlights from becoming blown out. However, I don't want this adjustment to affect the sky at all. So let's delete it and start over with that Darks 1 mask again. And this time I'll hold down the Control or Command on a Mac and click on my refined land selection that I made previously and saved in my channels panel. And that will load my land selection. Now I click the mask, the rapid mask button. And like I said, in this case, I don't want the transition to be blurred at all. So the blur radius should be zero. 
But when I try to set zero and click OK, Photoshop tells me that I can't set it to zero. In fact, 0.1 is the lowest value that it will allow. 0.1 pixels is almost no blur, so that's probably fine. But for those of us who are sticklers, Tony has coded the feature so that if you simply click the cancel button, it will set the blur all the way to zero. And that has now completely masked the sky out of my darks mask. And now I can apply this to that brightness and contrast adjustment layer and make my brightness and contrast adjustments to get that looking just how I want it. And there we go. So it's affecting the landscape and not the sky. And in this case, it's a little too bright where the land meets the sky. So I'll paint with a low opacity black brush along the skyline to feather the adjustment. This is different than blurring the transition because it only feathers down into the landscape, but not up into the sky, which is something that would leave a visible halo there. As with any type of adjustment in Photoshop, being able to localize luminosity mask adjustments to specific parts of an image makes them all the more useful. The updated mask the rapid mask feature is one great option the panel gives you. And don't forget that you can also localize a mask by painting on it with these buttons, and you can dodge and burn on a mask with these buttons. Other methods for localizing luminosity adjustments that you may want to look up or review include masking a mask, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, luminosity painting, and mask painting. Okay, that's all for now. I hope this quick tip was as good for you as it was for me. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.